can calculate the partition function for a molecule, we just have to take into account all the different places that energy can be stored in a molecule. And uh, we've seen that the energy can be stored uh, in translation, and uh, it can be stored in rotational modes, it can be stored in vibrational modes, and it can be stored in electronic modes, or at least those are the only four that we're going to look at in this course. And it's an approximation because it turns out the translational energy will have some effect on the rotational and the rotational and the vibrational, so they couple together. We're just going to pretend, though, that we can kind of uh, focus on the rotations and uh, ignore the vibrations and ignore the translations. So this allows us to write our partition function, uh, Q, is equal to the sum over all the states of e to the minus those energies and of course here we've got translational energy rotational vibrational and electronic here and just like before we've seen that we can actually separate these out so uh, these e to the uh, exponents that are being added up together can be separated out into separate terms like so and so we now have a nice product of all four of those energy terms one after the other and each one of these we can uh, represent as a partition function so we can call the first one the translational partition function and uh, that's supposed to be a t and the second one we can call the rotational partition function and the third one we can call the uh, vibrational and the fourth one the electronic partition function so the overall molecules partition function can be basically thought of as a product of these four individual partition functions so uh, it's kind of like a wave function where we can kind of factor out the orbital motion from the spin motion let's say and so here we're just kind of factoring out the translational rotational vibrational and electronic contributions so we should look at each one of these four in turn now, if you look at our textbook, they actually go ahead and they derive the transitional, translational partition function. Uh, but we're not going to go ahead and do that just in the interest of time. But if you like, you can follow along. And uh, if you look at the 3D particle in a box, you can show that the partition function looks something like so. Um, so here you've got the mass of the particle, the Boltzmann constant, the temperature, Planck's constant, and the volume of the system. And although we're not going to derive this in this course, you might in graduate school, let's say, I think it's kind of interesting to look at the effect of temperature on the partition function. So we know that as the temperature rises, the partition function is going to go up. Uh, it's not going to go up linearly, but it's going to go up to the three halves power. And this is what we'd expect because as we have higher and higher temperatures, we have access to higher and higher states. And so if Q is a measure of the number of occupied states at a particular temperature, then uh, we would expect it to increase with temperature. It's kind of instructive to look at the volume, I think. So let's have a look at the volume here and see how this affects things. And of course, we can see from our equation, the volume must be proportional to the partition function. We know that the larger the volume is, the higher the partition function is, and the more accessible states. But the question is, why is this? And we can go back to the energy expression for a particle in a three-dimensional box, which depends on three quantum numbers, nx, ny, and nz. And if we make it a cube, then it has an expression that's much simpler here. It's h squared over 8 times the mass of the particle times the length of the square of the box times by then the sum of those three quantum numbers squared which looks something like this and so this is for a cube but uh, we can see that uh, if we plot these energy diagrams out and we just move everything up a second we can plot the energy levels looking something like this so if we've got a small volume uh, that must correspond to a small value of L and if we've got a small value of L, since it's in the denominator of this energy expression, we must have large energy values. And so we have our energy states that are quite far apart here. And uh, as we uh, increase the volume, so as we go to uh, a larger volume, uh, that must come from an increase in the box length. And again, if you look at where the length is on this expression here, it's on the denominator. So if L gets bigger, then the energy levels get smaller. So this is really cool. So your energy levels actually get closer and closer together. So this is really exciting. So, you know, what's this going to do? Well, our expectation is, is that if you've got large spacing between the levels, that's going to cause um, populations to be very small outside of the lower levels here. But if the levels are close together, that means that on average, right, at any particular temperature, we can reach more of these levels and we can access them. So presumably our partition function will be larger. And this is exactly what we saw before, right? So we said that our partition function is essentially proportional to volume. So when the volume is small, our partition function is small. And that makes sense because in the 3D 
really part of a box. Our energy levels are far apart. You can't access most of those higher states. But as we expand our box, then uh, the length of the box gets larger, the volume gets larger, and the energy levels get closer and closer together. So this is an energy level diagram. I didn't label my axes here. And so if the energy levels get closer and closer together, we can reach more of them. And so we have a larger partition function here, whereas we have a smaller one on the left-hand side. We can calculate these partition functions, and for uh, normal volumes, they're massive, by the way. So, for instance, if we take something like methane, and uh, methane, of course, has a mass of about 16 AMU, so it's 16.04 AMU, and we take it at a temperature of 298 Kelvin, uh, we can calculate a partition function, and we get something that is uh, enormous. And uh, you can go through uh, the calculation. We need a volume, I suppose. So we can take a volume of 0.1 of a liter, uh, which is 10 to the minus 4 of a cubic meter. And we get a partition function, a translational partition function, of something like 6.2 times 10 to the 27. So it's huge. And uh, those uh, translational energy levels are so close together that at room temperature methane can access 10 to the 27 of these. So, uh, I mean, they're not technically a continuum because uh, there is an energy gap between them. But, I mean, you're looking at so many of them, so packed so closely together that really this methane can uh, really pick anyone it likes.